everybody. Welcome to the Tech Raptor Podcast. I'm Robert Scarpanito, your features editor. And Rotten, editor-in-chief. Robert Stoggett, site founder. Andrew Stretch, Houdini editor. Oh, and there's the exit. There you go. You can leave the pod. <laughs> See you next week. <laughs> yeah. That was easier than I expected. I don't know why people think that this is a difficult thing to do. Anyway, goodbye, guys. Great seeing you. Bye. Bye, Houdini. So, okay. We're a three-man pod the rest of the show. <laughs> If that's all it took, we should have done that a long time ago. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this week we're going to talk about Escape Academy and Dinkum. But before we do that, let's Dinkum. get into some news. Uh, EA had a little presser with the board room, I think is what they called it, which is fun. Uh, skate 4 is not Skate 4. It is now Skate period. Skate dot. Just the skate. concept of Skate. Wait, the period's uh, in the name? I think so. I hate it. I think that that's how they have it stylized, but it's just mm-hmm. skate. Okay. Uh, it's going to be a free-to-play game. It's not a remake. It's not a sequel. It's just a free-to-play skating game that's going to be a platform. And their idea is there's not going to be a Skate 5 or whatever. Like, this is it. This is skate. This is where you live now. Hmm. Yes. I'm. I'm... I normally hear games as a service and think, Ugh, and like immediately my mind jumps to all of the different ways that, uh, that there will be monetization and like abuse of monetization or how, you know, you might be impacted because you can't get like the right stats or this or that, like all of the stuff that we've been seeing with, um, the Diablo mobile game. And people mm. talking about how it, you know, if you wanted to fully rank up a character, it could be like 300k, yada, yada. Um, hearing that Skate 4 is going to be a live service, games as a service, I'm over the moon excited. This sounds okay. like a fantastic approach for a game like this. Yeah, but to- if I buy one of Tony Hawk's NFTs, um, can can I bring that into Skate? Like, that'll work, right? Yeah, you can also bring it into Fortnite too. Ooh, even better. That's right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's how I do an Ollie up the blockchain. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, you know, I, I kind of agree that I think Skate could benefit from being a uh, platform as opposed to a, in, like a game on its own. You know what I mean? Like being part of a franchise. Because this is definitely one of those places where you could just. I could see, you know, they release it in 2023 and then in 2024, there's a big comeback with like, oh, this season's like so good. You know, they tweaked the game like this and they added this new map or whatever. I could see that all being interesting. My hang up is monetization, which is, is going to be a, a theme. In oh, this it's going to be huge. <laughs> yeah. Well, but like, yeah, obviously they're going to, they said they're going to have um, cosmetics. So that makes sense, right? Deck out, deck out your skater boy or girl. Or they, they, them, anyone, right? Deck out your board itself, the trucks, everything, right? But then what if it gets into like, you know, you, if you want to do this cool trick, just pay us some money. I doubt they'll do that. Like, I could also see graffiti being a big thing mm. in terms of, mm-hmm. um, you know, buying like Fortnite or, sprays. Or even they talk about like how much building will be a part of the game as well. Like maybe your ability to place certain things, which is like for for the creators, for the people who will be putting in just so much time. Um, I think that that's going to be awesome. Uh, you know, we we also know that uh, we also know that a recent recent build of Skate may be leaked onto the internet, and I will not confirm nor deny that I have played it. Um, but in terms of like mechanics they've already got a really solid base in place allegedly according to what i've seen definitely what i've right. seen right and um, red yeah seen and read um that must have been very in depth what you read it was it was uh it took a lot to get through really had to had to look around deep for it mm. it's like it sounds um, like a lot like... did you get did you get bored well <laughs> seeing all that i did could... i did get bored sometimes it was pretty rough um, it's like you could feel the controller in your hands as you're reading it. Yeah. Um, so what I'm saying is that Skate at the moment is very playable and very fun. <laughs> um, 
But if if they're just going to stick with like the cosmetics aspect, you know, Skate has never had any kind of like a stat system the same way that Tony Hawk has. Right. Um, and I think that, you know, if they did get to the point of like, if you want to be able to do this trick or, you know, you'll go a little bit faster if you pay $5 a month kind of thing, that hopefully will like infringe on the simulator aspect of skate mm. uh, but no, it just it seems like a good way to get people involved in the idea that you can like go and hit a skate park with a whole bunch of randoms online and just to have fun uh that sounds so appealing yeah i think it'll be interesting seeing this under ea right? Because they also have Apex Legends. They also have Battlefield. You know, a lot of other, like, not free-to-play. Well, Apex is free-to-play, but, like, continuously monetized games. So this isn't the first time EA is doing it, right? So I guess this is going to be kind of that litmus test of have they learned how to do free-to-play in a way that doesn't scare people off or make people hate it, you know? We've definitely learned their lessons over the years with monetization. So hopefully they've taken something from each of those events mm -hmm. and said, all right, we're going to do it Is right this Is this the curveball because... you warned us about beforehand? <laughs> nope. Uh, uh, because uh, Skate EA is such is a... sucks. I mean, I won't disagree with you, but skate, skate, is, a is, skate, is, skate is a 10, but it's not a single player game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh my, wait, what if it isn't though? What if it just like, crashes? It's burns? just pure online? Yeah. What if it's like pure on like an MMO type of thing? Persistently online world. You run into people. Oh, I'm sure that that's what it'll be. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, that's it's, why it already it started sense. to get into that with Skate 3, that you yeah. could like just join a random online lobby and it would be a, like a section of the map, but there would be like eight other people skating. Um, mm. You didn't have to know them. You could just hop in and play. Um, so for this to be like that next evolution and just be like, hey, you load in and there's going to all periods of time, kind of the same way that the GTA Online does it. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, at any period of time, there's going to be 40 other people just skating in your world. Like, if you want to go and do each of the different quests and objectives that I have, again, only heard about, um, then you can go and do that and just ignore other people, or they'll probably add in functionality that you can, like, you know, set up a trick battle or mm. start a round of Hall of Meat and, like, people can get notified and can come and, like, walk over and join. Yeah, I mean, okay. it makes sense. Skating is a very social activity. Like, right. for them to say, you know, you're always going to have people around, it it just kind of lends itself to that hobby and, and how social people are and how people will interact at skate parks and um i think it would kind of take it take a series that people have been just clamoring for for years and years um and just kind of take it to that next level yeah and the more i think on it too i think like the mmo space could use a game that's a little more like this because you know you have like like destiny not quite an mmo but you know it's like a shooter action type thing final fantasy very like classic mmorpg experience but then here is just like mmo you hop in have fun do a kickflip mm -hmm. and you're good right and then we'll get the expansion in two years and it's going to be called heaven's board that's after the nice. they <laughs> blow up the game a realm reboard All right. i guess yeah. the way i i see it and i don't i'm not opposed to the idea because i i guess i'm comparing it mostly to like sports games in the sense that it is a simulation of an activity that we do. And unless mm -hmm. you're going to get crazy with it and make it arcadey or do some wild mechanics, there's not a lot of evolution in terms of gameplay. Like, you can make the simulation better or whatever, but the gameplay is really not going to change all that much mm -hmm. because it can't. Like, because if you're simulating a real-life thing, it's not going to... You're not going get to get away with it. So it, I like it in the sense that I, and I know it's not a one-to-one -one comparing it to something like Madden or uh, or whatever, because, you know, it's got roster updates and whatever nonsense they do. Right. But you're not paying $60 for a game every year 
on top of they already make a shit ton through all their microtransactions they have in those already. Hmm. Um, so the idea of this being a, an update thing, because because something like those <clears throat> those sports sims games, you know, two K, NBA two K, or Madden, FIFA, all that crap, the gameplay doesn't really change. And people complain about it and joke about it, but it's like, well, it can't, it can't though. Like, mm-hmm. <laughs> unless you draw like like we're not gonna, you know, we're changing all the rules to football now. Yeah. It's a different now game. Now there are four end zones. Yeah, so like they, <laughs> it, unless they're gonna get wacky with modes, there's not really much they can do other than refinement. Uh, and so the idea of something like say, I feel like that's kind of the similar with skate, unless they want to get weird with it. it it's they're in the same kind of boat, mm-hmm. in a way. I guess they get introduced new kind of tricks and stuff, um, but it's, it feels similar to to that kind of thing. So it's I like gonna the idea be a, of it being free. It's going to be especially weird as well because you know there was only ever skate and Tony Hawk for like skating video games. Forever. One was very arcadey. One was very. Um, one was very simulator. simulator, but now Skate has competitors in the form of Sessions and Skate Burb, right? No, yeah, Skate, <laughs> yeah, skate Burb. <laughs> oh yeah, um, no. What was the other one? I think it might just be called Skate like, XL. Skate, skate XL. XL. Yeah, that's, that's it. right. So it's now and like I've I've played one of them. I know that we've previewed another one for the site. Um, I forget. I think I I played Skater XL. I don't know, uh, but. It's like those; those are like proper simulators. Like uh, compared to compared to skate, those are simulators. <laughs> the skate oh, yeah. is still arcadey. Yeah, um, like skate is like driving automatic, and those game like Skater XL is like manual. Yeah. Uh, so it'll also be interesting to see kind of those those diehard fans who were looking forward to skate. Are they looking forward to skate for it to be skate or for it to be a skate simulation? Um, and will we see like indie darlings like uh, sessions pick up some of the slack? Mm. Yeah. Especially now that we know that Tony Hawk Pro Skater three plus four isn't going to happen through Activision. Right. I mean, I feel like we have quite a few arcadey skate games out there too, right? To like scratch that itch. So yeah, there's also yeah. what Skate Story is mm. a new like narrative skating game. And you have Ollie Tony Ollie. Hulk release was fantastic. Ollie Ollie, yeah, yeah. So it's it's a good That's time a to be a skateboard yeah, video right. game fan. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, in other news, across the pond, Nintendo has purchased Dynamo Pictures. Uh, they're an animation studio that primarily does CG animation. They've worked on stuff like they've done a few of the models for one of the Evangelion movies. Uh, they did the Dragon Ball Super Superhero movie that is not out yet in the West, but boy, howdy, am I excited. August 19, just a heads up. Um, but now they are owned by Nintendo, and they will be now named Nintendo Pictures. Well, I wonder yeah. what this means for their relationship with Illumination. Because <laughs> I mean, That's what I was wondering. Yeah, yeah it's like... The- they made a big deal about it. You know, the Minion studio is doing a Super Mario movie, but now they're having their own studio. Does that mean that whatever they're doing right now won't be able to build into what they're doing? Like, is the current Super Mario Bros. movie going to be the uh, the Incredible Hulk of the MCU kind of thing? <laughs> the Black Sheep, not really part of it, but not removed from it? I think you're, you're thinking that Nintendo's going to do anything that creative is insane. The end well, of the movie. It's not creative. If if since Marvel started making their cinematic universe, mm-hmm. creating a cinematic universe in film has been about the most unoriginal thing. We've had the yeah, Dooku, I guess, I guess the Annabelle, doing it well, the Annabelle cinematic universe, whatever that is. Yeah, it's doing it like well a- is a whole different thing. Yeah, isn't there uh, like a Godzilla and King Kong, like the monster cinematic universe? Yep. That's right. Uh, I think, you know, even the, the Shin Godzilla is about to get a... There's going to be a Shin Ultraman movie, and then they're going to be fighting each other as well. Of course. Um, no, I, I 100% think that Nintendo, in very Nintendo fashion, 
a trend has been around for 10 years and they're finally going to take a shot at it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, because they're going to be working on, what was it that they, they called it? Nintendo's portfolio of, quote, visual content. Yeah. <laughs> hey, hey, Super Mario 64 is visual content That's too, right. right? So, like, how vague can you get? I guess if they had thrown in interactive, then it might have, like, meant something. I don't know. It's yeah. definitely weird. Mm -hmm. I just hey, don't... It, it means that yeah. Chris Pratt will get great work for the next 10 years. We'll have Chris Pratt as Link from The Legend of Zelda. Chris Pratt as Kirby from the Kirby movie. That's going to take a dark turn as we learn more about Kirby's horrific origins as a sentient pink blob. He's a void. Yep. <laughs> It's basically the this you know, Ven eater. Venom for this cinematic universe, right? Yeah, yeah. that's a Kirby. Yeah. <laughs> he's he's made a pink symbiote. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I don't know. I I mean, the the obvious thing you could lean on here is the Smash Bros. cinematic universe, right? Like, be. make all the movies of like like make the Metroid movie, the Link movie, the Mario movie, and then some sort of mystical giant hand pulls them into a universe and that's makes right. them fight. That their Smash Bros. Ultimate is Avengers Endgame. Mm -hmm. Yeah, moment. You know, ten years from now, that's what we'll be talking about. Yeah, They're, they could even That'll snap be the end of their face too. It's a big hand. They could snap all the fucking characters. <laughs> yeah, well, the, the start of Smash Bros. Ultimate is when like the weird, like biblically accurate fucking angel appears and <laughs> smites everyone. <laughs> Kirby's the only one left. Like, because you can't be, kill Kirby. Yeah, it would be very easy for them to just be like, uh, yeah, sure. Like, let's kill everyone at the end of a certain movie as as the as the post credit spring sing shows this, and then we'll have a Kirby movie, and then we'll bring everyone back. Mm -hmm. It'll be okay. See, and and the funny thing is though, I think we're all kind of jumping the gun, maybe, because this could also just be like, oh, they're gonna make cutscenes for our games. Yeah, definitely. More, yeah. more CG it's stuff for games. Could 100% be that. Because, I mean, all the Fire Emblem games have, like, surprisingly well done cutscenes. I could just see Dynamo Pictures slotting into that for, like, I don't know, Metroid Prime 4. If, if, that, if that ever, if that still happened, <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. I don't know, the other thing we gotta remember too, like, Nintendo very much tries to cater to kids. So mm. it could be that kind of stuff more. Chris Come Pratt along. is ask cat ask catch him. <laughs> ask catch him. <laughs> That's the movie I want to see. Wow. <laughs> wow. That's a Freudian slip if I've ever heard one. Oh, wow. It's when you say one thing hey. but you mean Rut's mother. Uh, <laughs> wow. Didn't they make that yeah. isn't that called Deuce Bigelow? Isn't that what that movie is? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Yeah, but I don't know. I, I think this could totally just be make cutscenes for, for. Could be because like, I'm looking games. at like Dynamo, and it's not that they do. They're not. They don't make this big budget stuff like Illumination. You know what I mean? It's it's smaller scale. Seemingly, I mean, they're, I, mean I, I don't know. Like, Super superhero is pretty big. Yeah, I, well, like, I haven't maybe seen I'm that judging yet, it too much by how it looks, but it doesn't look all that big budget to me. Just saying. Fair. But I mean, it is still like Dragon Ball. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's a big name. Yeah. Yeah, but like Dragon Ball's like who I could get a fucking license for um, doing something if I wanted. King's Glaive was a good movie. <laughs> that's probably a that's probably an opinion that what? not many people would share. Huh. Yeah, King King's Blade huh. was hey. a, Good it, movie, speak, and it also it I, I looked thought you good. were leaving. Why are you still speak here? More, <laughs> speak, speak more on that stretch. Yeah. King's Glaive was a good movie. Sean Bean. Yeah, I mean, I think the the movie uh, being a necessary portion of story for the complete Final Fantasy XV video game, and then delivering it to you as a 10 second series of flashes probably wasn't the right uh, approach in terms of overall story. But for like an adventure of, uh, you know, a cocky renegade soldier going out saving a girl coming back kind of thing and then turning into a giant 
god demon thing. I enjoyed it, and it looked great. I think yeah, this is to the point of, I will agree that the Dragon Ball Super Superhero movie does not look fantastic. Um, mm -hmm. I think that there's real issues that people have translating something purely 2D into 3D space, um, mm -hmm. especially when they do stuff like keeping the animated frames of the models at like half the level like you would in traditional animation, because that just makes the 3D character models look janky. Yeah. Uh, but Kingsglaive looked gorgeous. Mm -hmm. Okay. So so it's a visuals thing for you, not, not quite the story. Oh, no, I enjoyed the story as well. Oh, um, okay. I think the, the overall decision, as a standalone story, I enjoyed it. The overall decision to have that be a standalone story that was a necessary chunk to a larger video game, I think that was weird. Yeah. Uh, it's like required reading for the video game, but it's a it's a movie with Lena Headey and Aaron Paul. Right. Because if you don't watch it, you're just playing Road Trip the video game. But if you and do watch Sean it, you're Bean. playing Road Trip Sean Bean context. played the king. It's the same way that they had those Final Fantasy XV anime vignettes as well mm -hmm. that gave you context to the relationship of the of the boy band. And it's like without watching those four 20 minute anime episodes, you're just like, okay, I guess they're all best friends. And then that's it. And I guess they filled in some yeah. of that with the DLC later. What more do you need yeah. to know? Yeah, we'll, we'll get into this in our uh, Final Fantasy 15 yeah. spoiler cast. A few years late. Gladio's but... <laughs> a werewolf. <laughs> what? Gladio's a werewolf. Is he? Yes. He... Sure. Oh. Yeah. He 100% no, sure. is a werewolf. Yeah. For... yeah, why not? He is. Um, but yeah, Dynamo Pictures, probably going to make Nintendo, Nintendo, Nintendo before, Pictures, please. Before we move on from Nintendo Pictures, it's going to be an interesting challenge for Nintendo if they are going to be making more content about their their IPs because I was just thinking there there's no character to any of their characters, you know what I mean? Other than like, hey, Mario, just does, he's, he fights bad guys. Link, he fights bad guys. I think That's they did it perfectly with the, with the animated series. Let's get let's get cocky oh, link yeah. back. <laughs> so I'm just I'm just wondering where they're gonna go with that because suddenly oh wham we have to like give these guys personalities, <laughs> mm. <laughs> which they don't like. They do it sometimes and they do it pretty well. Like I think we all kind of know who Luigi is by now. Mario He's doesn't really Day, have yeah. much, but it's uh, they don't really give other than like some superficial traits. We don't really know anything about anybody or how they operate. And when you're doing a show or a movie, you're it, inevitably you're going to have to expand that somehow. And I wonder so, what they'll do with it. So are you saying if if Nintendo, like in years from now, announces a dark, gritty, Locky 2 origin story d yes. done by Dynamo Pictures, formerly known as Dynamo Pictures, now Nintendo Pictures, you would not be excited to see that? I'm not. No, I'm, I'm just I'm just saying I wonder what Nintendo's going to do with it because they don't do that in their games. So it's not like they're like, oh, we have this, all this personality and history and what makes this character work the way they do. It's just, it's all pretty archetypal so far with hmm. what they've done. And I'm just curious what they'll do because it, it th they have to expand what they have. And I don't, I wonder where they'll go with it. <laughs> they could, they could probably just get a whole bunch of footage off the chopping room floor of Captain Marvel and make a, make a Metroid movie. <laughs> yeah. You better movie than that one. <laughs> Honestly, you know, I'd love to see them tackle a Mario Kart movie. Like one that can actually explain <laughs> in universe, like why a Mario Kart tournament is well, happening. That's, that's going to be the gritty Lucky 2 movie. Like his scene yeah. is yeah. Lucky 2 Fast, 2 Furious. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> yeah, that's it's it. like, it's like a, a, a mix and, of Ford versus Ferrari and Rush. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say Rush. <laughs> like, God, can you imagine? Be like a, Daniel Brule back. <laughs> There'll be a, a little Easter egg of, of <laughs> Captain Falcon eating a burger somewhere, not in the race at all, because he doesn't drive anymore. That's right, he's not. Mario's uh, father used to be in races until that one day, that <laughs> damn blue shell. <laughs> no, they would just make Captain Falcon, they'd ugly Sonic him in the movie. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be Captain Falcon. He'd be he'd be like one of the concession stands. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. Uh huh. 
He's selling Falcon Punch, which is a drink. (laughs) (laughs) Poor (sighs) poor Captain Falcon. Poor F Zero fans out. Well, fan singular. He's also got some seasoning he calls the Falcon Kick. He's like, Would you like a Falcon Kick (laughs) to your burger? It's all coming together. I'd watch uh, it. Nintendo Hires. There we I'd hundred percent watch that, yeah. But you know Fantastic. Nintendo would not. No, they not. no, they're not no. they they take themselves too seriously. <laughs> yeah. Nintendo, if you want some like goofy movie ideas, hit us up. Well that's Nintendo 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 Nintendo. You'd want to chat with Disney movie. about that. Yeah. yeah. They've made two goofy movies actually. Hmm. Yo, know, goofy movie's really good. It, it is the same. Hundred percent, yeah, it is. Facts. Good movie. The, the high school one, not the college one. Well, both are fine. But both were good. The high school one's really <laughs> yeah. good. Can I play as Max Goof in Skate? That's yes. that's gonna be the question. If it's coming to PC and they, it's mod friendly. <laughs> sure, absolutely. I, is Skate three on PC? I don't think so. No. I don't think so. <sighs> Did any of you guys remember? Mod friendly? Mm. Did any of you guys remember the Disney skateboarding game? No. No. That was a fun one. It it you was sure? not as tight controlled as Tony Hawk, but back you then don't it was say. like the realm of Tony Hawk <laughs> three and four. Yeah, um, that game was fun. I think I'm gonna mm. I'm gonna find a way to buy that for my PS2 or something after this podcast. Well, I think I think we know what game Stretch is going to talk about next week. <laughs> <laughs> it's called Disney's Extreme Skate Adventure. Yeah. <laughs> don't tell me this was good i'm just looking you can piss off no way i'm looking at what this looks like this is to tony hawk as uh hello kitty island adventure is to world of warcraft better than dynasty warriors 4 and elix 2 actually i'm Mm. seeing like buzz light you're grinding some rails right now this is actually pretty (laughs) rad i've I've come around yes oh my god zerg zerg's on a skateboard this is stupid. <laughs> wow. Speaking of stupid, Ugh. y'all want to talk about the Unity CEO la- from last week? Because, oh. boy, howdy, that, is that it? I hope that yeah? people wanting to go into PR and into games dev get this in their textbook as an example of what not to do. CEOs mm-hmm. that you shouldn't let talk. Right. So my understanding of the story here is that Unity has announced a merger with Iron Source, Mm -hmm. which does a lot of like basically maximizing monetization with your games and apps. Mm -hmm. And then in an interview with PocketGamer.biz, the Unity CEO has said something along the lines of people who don't want to put monetization in their games are pure, brilliant, and the biggest fucking idiots. Yeah, it it's been it's been a couple of rough years for Unity, and I think it starts at the top. Um, so you, you're not confident in John Rich Richitello, his whole no. Vibe? They've just they've just made a lot of like questionable decisions. He's said a lot of questionable things over the years too. Like this isn't the first time he's like said something that you're like why would you say that um but it just it it also kind of shows the mindset of some of the higher ups in the gaming industry and that focus on monetization because i understand that you need to make money but monetization should not be the primary focus that's not how you get a good game um looking at you diablo immortal um and to call the people who use your platform, who pay for your platform to create games, fucking stupid, is just... I, I don't even... I can't quantify it because you're essentially telling the people who are using your platform to create games that they put their blood, sweat, tears, and, and their, their passion into... And you're calling them stupid for not focusing on monetization. Like, that's a huge slap in their face. And it's it's made a lot of developers, at least from what I've seen on Twitter, be like, maybe it's time to move to Unreal because 
Epic puts a stupid amount of money into the developers that build on their platform and they do everything they can to make it developer friendly and easy to use. And honestly, over the years, Unity hasn't. Um, yeah. And, you know, I, I developed on Unity. I de developed on uh, UDK in college. Did not enjoy Unity. Um, and apparently it is still kind of difficult to develop on in comparison, but I don't know. I just, I'll never understand shooting on people for their passion. Yeah. And what I find like a little confusing too with his statement here is that, okay, so he thinks that like monetization is the future of gaming, right? Like, like microtransaction type shit. But he also makes a big point about how the future of this industry as a developer is you have to be able to take feedback at mm -hmm. all levels of development, right? And I feel like those two ideas are very at odds because I don't think there are that many gamers out there who are like, you know, Ragnar God of War Ragnarok is so fun, but I wish I had to pay money for a new Leviathan Axe skin. I wish I could throw more money at you so I could have my Chaos Blades look cooler. You know what I mean? Like... You say that, but people do say that stuff. Pretty. I mean, sure, but I don't. Games. I don't think it's like a big enough demand where then Corey Barlog's gonna be like, "Fuck, why didn't we put microtransactions in our in our big God of War game?" Well, Playing and it's and it's all it's all weird too, knowing the the history of Unity and the fact that the company that they're merging with, from from what I've read, has also been flagged for malware multiple times over the years. It's just kind of a weird, it's very strange. I, I don't know. Playing playing devil's advocate is like, you know, a lo monetization has a really bad <laughs> rap about it. There are ways to do monetization right. Just, you know, in essence of us buying video games, that's kind of a form of monetization. It's like, it's, we understand that like developers need to get paid uh, developers deserve to get paid a lot more than what they're likely currently being paid for the, the hours and hours of entertainment that they create. And so it's good to come in to, to this kind of discussion with the idea of like, yes, for those that want to make it better or like to, to make the monetizations easier for themselves. That's okay. It's just the issue with monetization has become such a a big issue about over monetization uh diablo immortal 300k to you know get as far as you can get um that you know it's become a slippery slope mm -hmm. and coming and where you're where you're never sure where a developer falls on that slope for the ceo of unity to come out and say people who are not doing that aggressive abuse of monetization um, and calling them fucking idiots is just like, oh, that that really says a lot more about you than it does about any developer that is currently utiliz utilizing your platform. Especially uh, knowing that the majority of Unity users are not AAA developers. Yeah. Well, to be fair to him, I don't think he's saying you have to be aggressive. I think he's saying monetization has to be something you need to be heavily considering while you're developing. I think that I, I this is gonna I don't know I think I'm the alone man here I largely agree with what he's saying mm. for the most part uh, I think that he said it in a quick way and that's what the the soundbite the stuff that people clickbaited away from him but he expands on it and says why he, what he's getting at and I think it so I've thought about I've been always wondering how I wanted to I wanted to write something or do something uh, about this but. What he's talking about is the key tension between when you're talking about like the commodification of art. So when, when someone is passionate in making a creative thing, whatever that is, a movie, music, book, whatever, uh, there is that tension of, okay, I put in all this effort or whatever. How am I going to, you know, get paid back or make my time worth it so that I can continue to do this? Like if I'm already well independently wealthy from something else and I'm doing this as a passion thing and I don't have to consider it, good for you. That's like point zero zero one percent of all people though. 
<laughs> so what he's getting is like you have to if you want to keep doing it if this is how i'm taking it right it, it maybe it's spinning off of what he's getting at like that is a consideration that has to be made for sure. Cause I don't think he's saying like Elden Ring was stupid for not putting in microtransactions or something like that. I think he's just saying you have to think about, okay, how am I going to make the money back in this so I continue doing what I'm doing? Mm. I think that's a very fair thing to get at that. That people yeah. say, Oh, I'm always just thinking about the game or passionate about this is that's obviously important, but how am I going to get my time investment back to continue to do what I want to do? Um, because like if we're gonna be realistic about the price of games, like they have it, they've we're games are cheap as hell. They've they haven't the prices the relative price has gone down the entire time I've been playing games. Games were sixty dollars when I was a kid. They're sixty dollars now. And you know, right now the biggest thing in the world is people talk about is inflation. Games prices aren't gonna be going up really. I mean, we had the sixty to seventy jump last year and that would cause a lot of outrage. Mm -hmm. Um yeah, but even then, you can buy, like, Hollow Knight, one of the best games, like, what people would yeah. say is the best game ever made, get 20 on, bucks. And you can get on sale for, like, 10 bucks. Yeah. So there's all kinds of... It's a very complicated issue, and I think he's absolutely yeah. right when he says that more developers, and specifically smaller developers, need to have monetization talks and exactly what they want that to look like in, in the process of developing. Absolutely. It needs to be a part of your game design document. Absolutely. Absolutely. Like, you need you need to be thinking through when you're building out, these are the mechanics of my game. This is the story or this is all of the options. You need to think through the value. If you're not, if you don't want to do any microtransactions, cool, but you've got to think through the value of the time that it's going to take to build that game. Mm -hmm. If you are doing yeah. microtransactions, you have to weigh that gameplay benefit versus the cost of, whatever if if it has any sort of impact on gameplay all that kind of stuff like that that i get that makes a ton of sense um it's just the way he said it for me like he could have phrased it better um and the fact mm. that he said fucking stupid it, it yeah i think it probably underscores something underlying um more so than the point he wanted to make um well do, do you think him saying this in the aftermath of like the iron source merger kind of painted sure you know, it kind of framed it differently right because yeah. iron source is a lot about like microtransaction type of monetization from what i understand well where it gets interesting too is that i don't remember when it was unity spun up a development division internally to create games to understand the cost of developing a game and shuttered it almost immediately. Mm. So it, there, there's a lot of stuff with unity over the years that just is strange. Like, Hey, we want, we're standing up this whole new development thing so that we can understand how hard or, you know, what challenges developers run into um, when they're developing on our platform. And then just to shutter it because the, there was no ROI to it. Um, it was interesting when I was kind of digging into the history of unity and, and understanding like things they've done in the past. Um, I mean, they've, they've also laid off it, June 29th. They laid off hundreds of staffers at unity. So it, it's also bad timing to talk about monetization in the midst of a merger that is probably very expensive after you've laid off hundreds of people. So I can understand why why developers are frustrated too, because there's all these things happening, and at the same time, you're you've got this soundbite where you're being called an idiot because you're not mon money focused or whatever. And, and to to reread the the this, I was rereading the quote again. What I think the people he's calling out are, are it's a specific kind of person. Where so what it makes me think of is so like let's uh, like all kinds of people like let's say I want to be a a movie star or a comedian or whatever that is some kind of entertainer and they you know the the cliche is like oh just put in the work and follow your dreams and you'll be successful when it's like fucking no not really not for most people no you could be great and put in as much effort as anybody else and you will not be successful at all um so i think part of what it is saying yeah you have this passion and be this brilliant game designer but there's an aspect to it if you really want to make this what you do as a job you have to consider this like it's impossible not to 
you have to you have to set yourself up for success as much as possible Mm -hmm. and there are great games out there that are not commercially successful a lot of them Mm -hmm. small Mm -hmm. games and big games i mean we can uh, we like to shit on square enix for what they did with their western uh games that they have (laughs) and complaining about the sales but I mean, even then, like you're, they're getting millions of sales, and it's not enough for Square to think it's worth worth their time, or they're they're potentially are losing money, or whatever the case may be. I mean, that's so, a good point too. Like a lot of what I look for when we're talking guides is follower counts and uh, hype around the game. And when I'm digging through, I'm finding games that have less than a hundred followers that I look at. And I'm like, this looks cool. Yeah. And it, it comes. There's just the number of games that have been released year over year is like exponential. Just mm. every year it almost doubles the number of releases. And so it is getting harder to break in. Um, yeah, and, well, that's, that and there's just so the... many facets to development beyond monetization. You're thinking PR, yeah. you're thinking marketing. Like it's well, There's just so much. That's the part of the point that he's making too. If you read further in the interview where he expands what he meant, it says like the... Things have changed from, okay, I'm done with this game. Let me give it to the people that know how to talk about games, and that's it. I'm done with it. No, it's a constant interaction with within the community or within something to build some kind of following, and that's all we're talking about. So it's not even necessarily I need to figure out ways for have people spend my spend money on my thing. It's how do I get people to just be, be aware of it mm-hmm. is also part of it. Yeah. Because it's not it's yeah, not it, enough now with how many games come out to just be like I made a good game. It's like well, so did five hundred other people. <laughs> yeah, and you can week. hire an incredible PR yeah. firm, and it can still flop. Like uh, right. so, there's you there's know, just we work with a lot of talented PR firms that send us games that look awesome, and they just don't see success despite that. A ton of great games out there. That, and I think the broader point is do as much as possible to make it so that you're successful enough to continue doing it. Yeah, right. don't don't think your game is going to stand on its own. You've got to do the marketing. You've got to drum up things. Yeah. I found like th- like this. There's this goofy little like penguin heist game that if you look at the Steam page, it doesn't look like anything great. But holy shit, their gift game is strong on Twitter. It's like just <laughs> penguins beating the shit out of each other yeah. with just the goofiest noises. And so I bought it. Um, yeah. And it, it's an enjoyable game. So it really comes down to it's not just you know hey write about my game to every single outlet you can find you've got you've got to build a community around it now right. um otherwise it goes nowhere okay yeah i think i'm like turning around on this because i've only like really been looking into this story today before the pod and i think it kind of feels like cherry picking the quote to read it the way a you little bit to. but even he says like bit, i shouldn't yeah. have said that the way that i said it yeah 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 because he he does apologize later on like like deeply sorry if what i said offended any game devs absolutely love the people that make games creative hard work right so i i think it's definitely the tone of it did not help but i think the yeah. point underneath makes a lot of sense comes down to phrasing uh, like comes down to phrasing you gotta be that, careful what you say and i don't know enough about this guy but i could understand let's say he is that let's let's be very charitable here let's say that he is that passion about wanting people to be successful and it would be frustrating to get those people that are just like follow your dreams that aren't really giving you real advice and those mm-hmm. are the people that everybody's like man those those people are so great and he's like no like you have to be fucking realistic about this it's like maybe he is yeah. that upset with those fucking idiots that he sees right. as idiots yeah. um that are getting all this attention where he's like no that's not realistic helpful practical I- advice that's going to get anybody anywhere I even get, I mean, I'll admit, I get that frustrated about competitors in our industry where I'm like, that's not how it works. No, you don't just suddenly get, he's like, I do good work, therefore I am successful. It's like, well, (laughs) you don't know what the real world anymore then. (laughs) Yeah, like you have to do good work here and shit blows up in our face. So, yeah, exactly. All right. Well, I think that's a good wrap on the news. Let's jump into some games. Um, oh, so oh, cur- oh, it's the he promised ball. a curveball yeah. before we started recording. Yeah. He kinda, so, hey, hey, he, he audience, I want, you to, yeah, I want you to know if this is disappointing, <laughs> Rut, if this is disappointing, this is the end of the sh- No more no Tech more Rider podcasts. So you right. have oh, a lot of, oh, oh, yeah. Well, we'll you, continue continue to you, just, you just won't be here. We'll do something yeah. else. We'll <laughs> call accidentally something close out of the window. Um, uh, yeah. no, is 
I was talking to somebody yesterday about like, uh, they're like, hey, I'm looking for stuff to play. And this is kind of what I'm looking for. And I was digging around through my Steam library. Um, and I was like, oh, I'm going to recommend, and I think Otten's going to shit on me for this, Lord of the Rings War in the North. Mm. Um, and I was digging into it, and RTS I was like, yeah. Game? No, that's, so it's like, it's the, the four player, I know what it is um, now. linear uh kind that of lord of the rings story fun as hell what do you mean i want to shit on you yeah and uh and so i was digging in and i was like yeah check this out and then they were like it's not available for sale anymore <laughs> and i had no idea so the publisher oh. pulled it um oh. and it's so you not you can't even buy it anymore um oh. and i found that and i was like wait what the hell? Because I understand that it got like six and sevens when it came out or whatever, and it wasn't like critically acclaimed. Well, it's not but that like, creative game. It's it's not incredible, but it's <laughs> fun. It gives you kind of a little bit more backstory to what was going on behind the scenes of the fellowship. Um and there's just some some interesting and, and fun gameplay there to just keep jumping in and, and mindlessly murdering orcs. Um but I don't remember hearing anything about that getting delisted. Um, and so that took me by surprise when I was like, oh, well, if I wanted somebody to play this, they literally cannot play it anymore. Mm -hmm. um, and it kind of ties into what we were discussing pre-pod about the, the feature we published about digital distribution and kind of the dangers of it. And, yeah. uh, and you can check out at techraptor.net. Yeah, link, link below, but like that to hear to have heard nothing about that was very strange for me um because mm. usually somebody says something and in this case it just quietly got pulled and i have no i couldn't even figure out when it got pulled so mm. very it strange looks like it was it was delisted in the past as well in 2019 but then it returned again in 2020 and then got delisted oh. again interesting okay so maybe it'll come back for a reunion tour you know Maybe. <laughs> or they're working on like a remake or something in the background. It's also get... a game from 2011. Get people yeah. in on that mediocre game. Yeah. Hey, plus, Stretch, Skyrim is a game from 2011, and we're still hearing about it. That's true. Hey, yeah. Maybe this like should have uh, released on every platform. Mm. Uh, it looks like you can get Lord of the Rings War in the North uh, from GameStop, and that you can also get it on G2A. Hey. I thought I thought GameStop only did uh, NFTs now. <laughs> wow. Oh, sorry. Yeah, no. It's just a it's just a picture of the front of the box. My bad. Oh, and you can buy that for twenty dollars. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, that's the yeah. NFT. Yeah, perfect. Oh, what? it's a games uh, for Windows Live title. That's that might it be was, why yeah. it's gone. It <sighs> it works without it. They pulled that. They pulled that functionality okay. out of it. Yeah, because I I yeah. have it installed on Steam right now. I've been playing it for the last couple months. Just you can like, you can buy a digital months? copy of the game for yeah. PC through. I'll just GameStop like I'll just right like now. play play a level and then go back to playing oh. whatever the fuck else and then I'm sure. like oh, I want to shoot some orcs today and then I hop back in. Did you hear that, Rut? Also, I'm trying to hundred percent it, but yeah. So, what did you say, Stretch? What did you say? That uh, that you can get it for twenty dollars a digital code via GameStop right now. Mm. So it might be delisted off the Steam storefront, but someone's still got access to generate keys. Mm -hmm. Interesting. It just makes me reminds okay. me of the old Lord of the Rings games that were actually really great, based on the movie. Oh, the, like uh, Return of the King. Two Towers. Hell, yeah, mm -hmm. Two Towers and Return of the King. Those were good, good shit. Hey, quick gut check from Lord of the Rings fans. Is Gollum on, is that, you know? Yes. Yeah? Is yeah. that on the radar for you? Yeah, I, I saw, think his I eyes saw look the, too uh... cute. He looks adorable. <laughs> uh, I saw I'm the behind sure the scenes like that. stuff from uh, the publisher. They did a, a presentation for press. And uh, it looks like it's going to be interesting. I'm still not 100% sure, like, what the gameplay is. It, there's a, the majority of it is, like, stealth-focused, so... Yeah. Um... Uh, misdirection getting orcs to turn around so you can go around him so the stealth elements might actually be really cool and there's some puzzles and stuff to it doesn't look like there's a lot of combat mm. um so i mean i guess we'll see how it kind of resounds with people but any opportunity to hop into some more lord of the rings for me is good fair okay uh stretch you want to tell us about escape academy yeah um i've been playing escape academy it's kind of funny after talking with rut 
a few weeks ago about the um, escape room game that he and his friend had been playing. Um, escape Academy dropped on Game Pass this week. Um, I've only played like two, uh, three or four of the puzzles so far. Um, and it's a really fun, like it's a proper escape room. It's got local co-op, which is really cool as well. You just drop into a room and start figuring out puzzles and stuff. It's apparently the, the minds behind it are, um, legitimate escape room creators that mm. at the start of the pandemic, when they weren't able to continue designing like puzzle rooms and stuff, they turned around to some developers and said, well, you know, what can we do to, to make a video game? And so you're kind of like, you know, your first puzzle in this game is like a really, you know, crappy low budget escape room that then is like your, uh, your access way to becoming a part of the escape Academy and like going off. And then you like meet the different professors and their escape rooms are themed after them. Um, and it's just like a really fun, like it's a, it's a full on escape room experience, just Ooh. digital. Is it very uh, long? Like, have you beaten it? Uh, I have not beaten it. Um, I've probably played an hour, hour and a half. And I've completed like four of the rooms, three of the rooms. Um, and I think I've got like a little bit less than half of the map uncovered. Mm. So I'm expecting that it's probably going to be like a four or five hour experience. Um, but it's, it's fun. Um, there is like some weird, like latency issues with the Xbox controller. I've been playing it on series X, just kind of like everything feels a bit sluggish. And when you're trying to like quickly move from the table where you've used the key, where you've gotten some items to then move over to a different like keypad to punch in a number. And it's all like mouse controlled. It's, it very much feels like it's designed for, for PC. Mm. Um, still definitely playable with controller, but it's not going to be as good an experience. Right. Have you had to break out the pen and paper yet? Not yet. Uh, I think mm. that there's, there's one puzzle. Um, I was getting very tired and frustrated playing it last night. Also in part because I live in Florida and my AC broke yesterday. Um, How are you alive? But, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's not conducive to uh, to solving mental games when inside it was like 86 degrees at 10 p.m. Jeez. Um, but uh, but I, I definitely can see how quickly, you know, if I'm getting frustrated or like, you know, needing to double take on some stuff, um, even at like two out of four keys difficulty, then uh, I'm sure that there would be stuff later on that you definitely need to have pen and paper for. That's like the first oh. loading message in the game is like, reminder, you know, it's it's good to keep a pen and paper nearby. Like, <laughs> you'll need it. Prepare it. We're going to warn you now. <laughs> ah, so it's, it's like Elden Ring. Yeah, yes. that's exactly Elden what it's Ring, like. Got it. Famous. Elden Ring is just a giant escape room, if you think about that's it. That's what it is. That's what all video are. games technically, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I realize now why Stretch is playing it, because it's on Game Pass. Mm. I mean, hey, when it's when it's free games, I'll, I'll play free games. free games. I also started Garden Story, uh, also just dropped on Game Pass. Yeah. Is that also a giant escape room? Uh, yeah, because it's, it's a video, video game. game. Mm -hmm. yep. about, yeah. uh, what about Power Wash Simulator? I, I, I don't I, think that I would care enough about playing that hey, game. No fucking joke, I want to play that we game. We can all play it together. <laughs> it's on Games Pass. We can it all is, play yeah. it together. Yeah, I downloaded it this morning. We can Power Wash <laughs> a house together. Hell yeah. Uh, Rut, do you want to talk about Dinkum, which sounds like it's a, a, great a name. fake Disney character? I love the name. Yeah. It's uh it's it's the story of going back to Stretch's uh Stretch's home um and uh, uh my, and, my and building a village. My ancestral home. Your ancestral as of, home. like the past 200 years. Yeah. Yeah. Australia. Um, oh, that's how you pronounce. It. Got it. Okay. Yeah, Australia. Um, <laughs> Australia. Um it is uh how did I describe it earlier? So it's it's Animal Crossing with humans, um, kind of mixed with like a little bit of 
Minecraft and Stardew um, in mm. terms of like there's crafting. So you essentially drop on an island and people come to the island and you can build a village. Um, it, it functions a little bit differently than Animal Crossing where Animal Crossing just randomly has people show up on your island um, and then you can have them move in. In this case, you have to complete certain milestones before people will start visiting your island, and then you have to do things for those people to convince them to stay. Um, and so there's a lot of like, uh, there's like, and you have skills, so like foraging, mining, fishing, stuff like that. Um, and you have to get permits for each. You can upgrade your permits as you level up to do, you know, chop down harder trees and stuff like that. Um, I've only been playing maybe two hours. I've played like a week and a half, two weeks in game. Um, and it's just, it's super chill. Um, you've got, uh, you know, alligators, kangaroos, uh, all that good stuff. And it's just chill. Wait, like as pets or, uh, I think you can like tame them or whatever, but you can also kill them for meat. Mm. Are the so. kangaroos as much of a menace as they actually are in Australia? Uh, no. No, they're Not pretty bad. <laughs> yeah, like the more, everything I've heard, like people that actually live, they're like, oh, we fucking hate them because they're just a pain in the ass. Yeah. It's, well, it's it's funny. Robert uh, messaged me the other day, and he's like, "I'm not sure what to think of this, but the kangaroos grunt when they poop." Um, <laughs> <laughs> and I messaged the developer about that, and he was like, "That wasn't intended, but it felt like the right thing to do, leaving it in." <laughs> Fair. Yeah. It's funny, um, and I thought that that was hilarious. <laughs> Australia is the, or at least as far as I'm aware, Australia is the only country that will eat animals that are on their coat of arms, and we yeah. eat both of them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, y'all yeah, go hard down under, huh? Yeah. You gotta yeah. do what you gotta, what you gotta do, what you gotta do to live down there. Yeah, I guess so. Survive. Yeah, they, well, they no, only it's... live like, um couple miles off the coast other than that they don't live anywhere in their whole fucking country yeah dinkum dinkum is one that i'm definitely interested in checking out at some point um but i think uh for the time being i probably will just sit back and see see how the development of it continues because what it's it's in early access right it's now early access yeah they've okay. already got a roadmap out for the next like six months and they're going to be adding more npcs more buildings um, awesome. there's different biomes within so you you have a procedurally generated map when you start the game and there's different biomes and each biome has different stuff there's like mines you can go into um it's again it, it's like animal crossing but with deeper mechanics mm -hmm. um so if you enjoy the animal crossing genre you also enjoy kind of some of the aspects of survival games with crafting and collecting resources and stuff it it combines both pretty effectively um you know and the game's picking up steam pretty quick in terms and of who doesn't following. love australia am i right <laughs> yeah <laughs> yep that's what i thought resounding resounding <laughs> nodded had, nods a lot of heads of, from everyone they've had a lot of yes. good press lately from what i've seen yes. a lot of good stuff happened in that country kind <laughs> nothing of, kind bad kind of like the united states nothing but good yes. politics <laughs> yep yep exactly everything's great here yeah. dandy we're a utopia yeah. mm-hmm now it's is that just on Steam if it's early access? Just on know? Steam, I think it'll their plans are to come to other platforms. Gotcha. Um but I could be wrong, maybe on other platforms too. I I just play everything on Steam. So Right. That, that's your only gaming. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's just on Windows right now. But I know mm. that there's probably plans to expand. Um mm. as the, probably out of at early access. For sure. And that's uh that's Dinkum out Dinkum. now in early access. Mm-hmm. Um, so I want to bring back Kitten's Corner for maybe the last time for me on this pod. You say think, that. Well, so here's the thing. I don't think I'm done playing it, but I'm done thinking about it. Um, <laughs> you're not. You're not, though. Well, so here's the thing. I broke Kitten's game. I have hacked it. What so because you, you can go, you can go into the console and just like add like a billion whatever oh, resources. Awesome. So you're cheating. What? I'm cheating. Yeah. 100%. Um, that defeats the whole purpose. Exactly. And that's that's when I did that, that's when I realized this is such a waste of time. <laughs> <laughs> Some, hey, sometimes you need to you need to break the game to 
free yourself from it. <laughs> yeah. Um, I will not you know, hear I just this. Re- I'm upset now. <laughs> I don't want to hear this. <laughs> This is, like, this is like a betrayal. Oh, no. like, yeah, it's like it's like you're like oh I got hired somewhere else and I gave all of our internal documents away. That's how this is feels. That bad? Yeah, that's how bad I feel right now. No, I mean uh, I'm just, I was just curious about like okay, can you cheat in this game? And if so, how would it make me feel? So I did it. And so now there are points where and it's it kind of like you feel dirty. <laughs> I mean, it felt a little dirty, but also like, man, this really is just like, like the perfect platform to hack other people's computers and mine crypto, you know, like, the, cause <laughs> it's just about keeping it up on the browser. That's it's just yeah. a really long waiting game. Um, cause I got to the point where like, this was my second run through. Mm-hmm. Right. And I was building up resources faster which was great but then that also meant way more time micromanaging and basically having to click the send hunter button every like minute to send 30 hunters out before my cat power reaches the maximum yeah. and it got to the point where i was micromanaging it so much that i was like this is just a waste could i just add a billion furs and be done with having to micromanage it and from there <laughs> I just <started> into, <laughs> what if i added a billion wood <laughs> Because you can add way more than your cap. It, uh, Scrappy is going to be debuting his kittens game, Speedrun Any Percent. Uh, <laughs> yeah. He's going to be done in a minute. <laughs> How wild is that? Yeah, just type in a key uh, command and you're good. I don't, I don't know good. if we can continue this anymore. Yeah. I don't know if I can. <laughs> Auden just looks disappointed. <laughs> this is just... just... I mean, when when I reset, I'm gonna reset again and keep playing it, and I'm I'm probably not gonna cheat anymore. But there is just something about like that level of micromanagement that you had to do that was like a little annoying. Don't like, try to bring fun. this back to having a conversation. We're done. Okay. This is over. <laughs> okay. <laughs> don't, don't even try. Otten's so planning upset. on leaving, and he's taking all of Tr's documentation right. with him. He's taking Kitten's game with him. Uh, <laughs> You're what genuinely an amazing note that... to finish up. <laughs> <laughs> Holy crap. You took, you took something beautiful and you just shit all over it. <laughs> You're like the guy and that you, threw acid and you on the Mona Lisa. slightly grunted while you did it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's who you are. I don't know. It was just, uh, it was interesting to see that the game is like, because it, it is pretty... I'm not going to say basic code because I couldn't make it myself, but the commands are pretty straightforward. So it was interesting kind of like peeking behind the curtain and seeing all that code and being like, oh, this is really just a bunch of counters. It's a bunch of ticks. You know, like every time you tick, you get... I think it's insane that it took you doing that to realize that. (laughs) Well, no, I knew that. I think it's just interesting seeing it, like seeing the code, you know, like actually inspecting the element and looking at it. Oh man, this is and that then you can moment. Break the game. This is Wizard of Oz where you you're right. You just peek behind the you curtain. Peek behind the curtain. Ruin the whole thing. I, ruin is a strong word, but I definitely see no, kittens no, game in a very accurate. different light. Yeah. Okay. All right. You're not invited. No, no, it's to kittens it's okay. Anymore. You're you're likening it to um, Dorothy peeking behind the curtain. What's actually happened is that Scrappy is now Neo. He's been <laughs> reborn as the one. He can see the code. He can yeah, see the kittens. I, well, I, I took will, the blue pill or the red one, whichever one it is. I will happily stay in Plato's cave and look <laughs> at the shadows on the wall. <laughs> That's where yeah. I will remain. Sure. Fair. I mean, I'm I'm up to the point where uh, I launched my first rocket. I'm I'm slowly getting uranium, you know? So I'm like, not even like crazy far ahead. You know, I'm not like... I was past trading. that in my first playthrough. Jesus, dude, you waited a long time in your he first waited, playthrough. He waited way I did, too I waited long way to too reset. Long. Yeah, no, I, I didn't get that far in my first playthrough. This is my first time seeing all of that stuff. But then there's also just that idea of, like, I could just add a billion uranium and, and be done. <laughs> Do it. <laughs> Slippery slope. It is, yeah. I probably won't. Hey, man, but... hey, man, just one more hit of cheats. One more hit of cheats and then I'm done cheating. I swear, man. I swear. <laughs> does does the paragon? So if you reset, 
So I reset and I had 76 Paragon, 14 Karma. If I reset again, does that carry over too, or is it just what's generated under the time tab? It it, it gets added on to. So if you have so it's 70... added on to, so Paragon carries over right. from oh, run to run. Yeah. Well. well okay. Yes and no. Well, because you can use Paragon later on. You can right? spend like, it a little resource. later. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. But it does carry over. So what, Scrappy just cheated himself out of the pride and accomplishment of playing the game. Wrapping it back around at EA. I was yeah. gonna say I'm, that yeah. that sounds I like did. familiar words. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay as, and, as if you tell him that he's fucking stupid. At that point, I think we'll have retouched on absolutely everything, everything that we have spoken about. <laughs> yeah, and hey, here's here's the beauty of it. So, like, just for understanding the game, uh, one paragon point makes most things go one percent faster, basically, ish. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so, if you have a hundred paragon points, you're kind of doubling your speed. So Rut played for what was that like three weeks, four weeks to make everything go seventy seven percent faster. Yeah, seventy seven percent faster. I did the same thing and I went to like eighty four percent faster. Or you could go a billion percent faster by, <laughs> by adding Paragon because that's a again, it's just part of the code, man. It. <laughs> that's awesome. I love that. You've ruined the majesty of it. I, you, I don't want bit. you to ever bring this up again. <laughs> like, you know, you said you're done with thinking about it. I hope that's true because I don't want to hear you say a goddamn word about it. You don't deserve to. I think that, that that's that's the finality that's, that's of good, Kitten's yeah. game on this podcast. This has been a weird uh, saga, but uh, listen, we, he's, we, you know, I think he crossed the a line I didn't know was there. Whatever Otten brings up next to ruin my life, don't ruin that too. <laughs> he won't he won't play the next one he won't be as interested i guarantee you okay we'll i'll be surprised okay. if he is we'll see we'll see i'm still waiting for there's a you know whenever there's a good lull lull in the time i'll, I'll spring it on you mm-hmm. maybe around november 9th i think there's not going to be much coming out then oh, so it'll be pretty chill yeah it's super chill probably frosty the whole honestly. the whole rest of this year there's nothing really happening so yeah exactly yeah, um, but I think that's going to do it for this week's episode of the Tech Raptor Podcast. We hope you enjoyed, and if you did, please leave a review down below on whatever platform you are listening on, and share it with a friend. Share share the fun, share the joy, share the joy of breaking. Yeah, or you know, game. just cheat yourself to having more friends and don't actually have the enjoyment of it at all. How about that? Yeah, I mean, just you know, type all of in our some reviews, fucking I... codes and get some bots following you, so you have some fake friends. That's just as good yeah. as doing it, right? <laughs> This is my favorite uh, episode of the podcast. This yeah, is great. This, I'm, uh, I'm so glad this brought Otten is so mad. Oh. Uh, <laughs> uh, Bye, if everyone. You want, if you want more of us, you can subscribe. Please do. Uh, you get all of our new episodes every week. And let us know down below, would you cheat in a game like Kitten's Game? Would you be a, a filthy casual like me? Just let us know, either on TechRapper.net. You're worse than that. <laughs> YouTube. <laughs> Uh, and also go to our site if you want more news reviews features we publish those every day of the week but if you want more of this show we will be back next monday maybe we'll see you then i don't know now <laughs> <laughs> hey brett can i can i pitch a kittens game guide how, how to just cheat everything we can share this world oh. <laughs> i can delete things <laughs> oh man anyway i guess we'll see you next week yeah. <laughs> <laughs>